you want to know how to get more athletes on your schedule, uh, you need to tune to this episode. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome uh, all new listeners. and Welcome back to those who have heard my content in the past. Uh, if you want to know how to get more athletes on your schedule, uh, you need to tune to this episode. All right. Before we go on to the podcast, uh, what is new and what is uh, better in life? Uh, my daughter, if you guys have been listening to my podcast before, my daughter's now hugging me again. Uh, that goes in waves. Uh, that is cool this week. Uh, my son, Jacob, has been very busy. Uh, he's been helping us renovate our new facility. Uh, and then uh, my son, Zach, is super into uh, super sm- uh, Smash Brothers on uh, on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so we've been uh, going at it uh, multiple hours a week. And uh, he is absolutely crushing me. So uh, I'm coming back with a vengeance next week. My wife is happy. Uh, all good things in our life. Uh, we just had date night, which was amazing. Uh, we went out for steak. Uh, if you guys aren't, if you have your partners, whatever it is, uh, I treat date night uh, as a very special time uh, for myself and my wife to regroup. Uh, it's a very, very big thing for us. Every month we do it, and it's just time away and time for ourselves. Um, don't really talk about like business or life or uh, just talking about our relationship and um, all the good things that come with it. So, uh, all right, on to the podcast. What are you talking about? So uh, we're talking about getting athletes on your schedule. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, uh, you're a sports physical therapist, uh, aspiring, current, um, expert, whatever you call yourself. And uh, you might uh, go in waves where you have patients or athletes who are lower fitness level, uh, and then maybe you get pro athletes, or maybe you get collegiate athletes or high school athletes, or maybe you don't have any. And your big goal is like, well, how do I get more on my schedule? And um, wherever you are, I have a great, easy recipe for you to uh, implement uh, as soon as tomorrow. And uh, why am I talking about this? Uh, It's the conversations I've been having with my team. uh, And uh, going off of our my Kickstarter uh, mentorship program, there's just they're, they're the same questions just posed a little differently. One of them was, what if somebody's not ready to <clears throat> to go back to sport? What do you do? Uh, what if somebody is in the acute phase and they need to return in a short timeline, but they're not ready? And uh, we went over a certain case, and essentially, uh, I reflected on the case, and the big takeaway I had was, if sometimes as physical therapists, we want the athlete to be like 100%, right? Like if they're an ACL, we want them to be 100% especially if you have all the time in the world. But if they don't have all the time in the world and it's a non-operative knee pain who needs to be able to go back to sport in a not an ideal scenario, it is not your job as a physical therapist to tell them they're ready or not. It's your job to tell them how ready they are and they get to decide. So when somebody asked me the question, you know, what do you do? The answer was easy. You meet them where they're at and give them an opportunity and a chance, give all the tools, all the recipe, all the, all the things necessary to succeed, and then they can make that decision at the end of it. But we as clinicians, we see it differently. So when people ask, how do I get more athletes on the schedule? Athletes and inactive people are very similar. They're the same person. They're just in a different stage, and I'll, and I'll um, tell you more about that. So if you're wondering how to get more uh, athletes on the schedule, this is a perfect podcast for you. Now, I'll tell you what uh, getting athletes, like how, how not to get athletes on your schedule. Most people think, especially nowadays, right, well, maybe if I just start posting really cool exercises online, that'll, that'll get me really good athletes. That's not what you need to do. That's not what, that's not how you get athletes on your schedule. You don't give them super advanced exercises at the initial evaluation or anything like that. You don't have to. That's not what an athlete's looking for. And when you ask, okay, so how do I get it? You have to think about who that person is first. Before before we even talk about what an athlete is, who who is the person behind, you know, training for a sport or whatever it is? It's somebody who, if you've listened to my podcast before, uh, I I have a fitness bell curve, and on the left side of the bell curve is people who are inactive, don't really 
exercise a ton or at all. And then you have people on the other side of the 10% of the bell curve who are overactive, they're too active, they're professional athletes, that's just part of their job, you have to slow them down. So the people who are inactive, you have to, you know, uh, bring them up. The people who are uh, overactive, you have to slow them down. And everyone else is in between. So when you see people on that bell curve, you just have to see where they're at and meet them where they're at and continue to service wherever they are along that spectrum. And most physical therapists think, well, if I have an athlete, I should treat them like an athlete. That's that's not the case. They're a person who has to have who happens to have a high fitness level. And you're trying to challenge them with more activity, you're actually doing them a disservice. But you, what you try and do is you apply what you see on media or what you think that they want, when in reality is they're coming to you. They're consulting with you as the specialist, as the physical therapist. What should I do now that I have my knee pain and I want to get back to competition? Your instinct is you're super active, so I'm going to give you the active exercise to make you that much better. But when you see it from a tissue tolerance or tissue healing standpoint, these people are breaking down their tissue on a daily basis. They're overloading the tissue. And so as a clinician, what do you typically do? Well, let's load them up more because they're active and they can handle it. No, that's not the point. What is your job? Take away the, the, the facade or the image, the title of athlete. Remove that and just look at their tissue tolerance and tissue damage. What would you do? You'd be like, well, I need to back them off a little bit. Okay. So remove that title, remove the image and help somebody manage their neuromuscular demands or adaptations and their tissue tolerance according to what their schedule or weekly, you know, uh, training schedule looks like. So somebody who's inactive, all you would do is, well, if you look at your week, this is, this is not a good week. We have to increase your activity level. You don't have any tissue tolerance. We have to start to build that up. And somebody on the far right side who's super active, you have to slow them down, you know, bring them down a little bit. But it's all about how you package that in the plan that you give them, exercise you give them. So an athlete doesn't want to be slowed down. So you can't say slow down. <laughs> what we need to do is pick our battles. You're using so many reps already with, you know, you know, sled pushes or squats or lunges and training and all these other things. We have to be able to allocate what available stress we have and put that into rehab exercises, maybe back you off this way, but advance your exercise this way. But overall, it's all a balancing act. So if you're going to pick up one, you got to drop the other. So if they're either training, you can't have high volume of training and high volume of rehab. It's just not possible, especially if they're in season. Now, if they're off season, great. But most people develop pain in season, and that's why they have, you know, uh, training challenges. So how does this go back to like, well, how do I get more athletes on schedule? First and foremost, you have to understand what you're doing for this person who happens to have a high fitness level. So behind the scenes, what do they have? They have a problem with too much tissue damage of being applied. So what is your role? Adjust it, modify it, make the corrections, insert it into their training regimen so you don't add to it. But they're not, athletes are not looking for the sexy exercise. They're looking for somebody who understands them and understands their mindset and understands their training. What they're not looking for is somebody to overload them with a twisty bandy rotation exercise with the uh, super squats on one leg on a kettlebell or a dumbbell or a BOSU ball with a barbell and all these like fancy cool things. That's not what athletes are, athletes are looking for. Now, if they're in off season and you're working with them as a strength coach, oh, that's a different story, but know where they're at. And so what athletes are looking for is somebody who understands their year, understands their training blocks, understands their progressive overload mindset, understands when they're in competition, know when to push and pull. 
So they're looking for somebody who can manage their tissue stress across a year. So once you understand that, now you can apply and talk their language. What they're not looking for is somebody to overload them because they're trying to impress them. I'll tell you the truth. After working with thousands of professional athletes over the last decade, what they get turned off by is people who throw alphabet soup, credentials, what they've done in the past. That's what they, that's what they don't like because they're like, well, how does that have anything to do with me? You're just, you're just showing off what you have. How does that impact my ability to run 100 meters in the next three weeks without pain? And they know that. So first, my first point on this is that you need to understand the mindset of who they are. What that allows you to do is service them wherever they are in a season or in their career. If they're like, well, I'm in off season right now. So, okay, so now my rehab, I can start to bump that up. I can give you a lot of exercise. I can create programs for you. But if they're in season, you got to back them off training and increase your rehab, or you're going to keep them training with a small amount of rehab. It's all about tissue stress across a year and what's their tolerance. Now, let's take the, the couch potato, the, the person who's not very active. That person also has a certain amount of tissue being applied. And what does their year look, look, look like? Not very much. So how do you get something like that out of pain? You have to move them more. You have to develop tissue tolerance. You have to stress them more. The irony of all that, right? Somebody is inactive and painful. What's the solution? Provide more tissue stress. So you can have some adaptation, resilience, strength, hypertrophy, and that allows them to stay in the load that, you know, maybe they're overweight or maybe they have too much, I don't know, uh, tissue stress on that joint when they're sitting or whatever it is. But so what's, what, what, what do we do with these individuals? Progressive overload. Challenge them. The professional athlete, you have to see where they're at in season, off season, and apply the adequate stress to get them to the next step. The person who's not doing anything, you got to challenge them to get to that next level. So the professional athlete and the couch potato are the same person, however, with a different fitness level, a different amount of tissue stress being applied. One is just very young in the stage <laughs> and one is very advanced. And so when you have an athlete you have to meet them where they're at. They're in off-season, you can load them. If they're pre-season, be careful. If they're in-season, you got to play really closely with those tissue tolerances. If they're an inactive person, couch potato, meet them where they're at. Develop more stress. You have somebody in the middle of the bell curve, community member who enjoys running or CrossFit or F45 or they're a mountain climber, whatever it is that they do, meet them where they're at. Meaning, I understand you have knee pain. Tell me what your week looks like. Tell me what your month looks like. What's an ideal year for you? What do you enjoy? How do you apply the stresses across the year? And if you can understand that, guess what? You can meet them where they're at, add more stress, remove their stress. What if you have somebody who is, oh, I used to be a, a pro athlete, but then now they're a couch potato. Remove the title former athlete. Their current tissue stress is very poor. Progressive overload, load them until they're ready. So titles mean nothing, get rid of it. So an athlete is just somebody with a high fitness level or a high amount of tissue stress on a regular basis. So remove the word athlete. So the question becomes, how do I get more people who want more to, who have a lot of tissue stress going on? How about you work on getting people who don't have tissue stress and apply more, I'll get them to that next step. Once people understand and they see that, you'll be seen as truly the person who can get outcomes. And in a traditional orthopedic setting, whatever setting you're in, you're in a D1 sports, you're in an orthopedic clinic, your cash pay, whatever your, your domain is, we all see the same people. They're all the same people. They're just in different zip codes, different states, because they're all along that spectrum. 
whether you're in Wisconsin, Florida, Oregon, everybody you see is applying varying stresses to their life. And once you can determine where they're at, get them to that next level, send them off. But guess what? They might be back because they're now applying more stress. So your job is never to get them out of pain. Your job is to get them to the point where they can manage the amount of tissue stress they have. And guess what? They're going to come right back in a few months or a year or two later. It's not you didn't do your job. You did the right thing. You got them to the next level of tissue stress. Let them enjoy that. They got into 5K. Awesome. Resolve your knee pain. You know what's going to hit you next? The half marathon, because that's where you're going to go next. And they're like, how did you know? They go try the half marathon. They're like, oh, that knee pain came back. It's not that you were a bad physical therapist. You did your job to get them to that next level. And then once they're at the half marathon, what do you do next? Develop more tissue tolerance, work on the running form, get a strength program, off season, injury prevention, whatever it is. And then, you know, the next tissue stress is they're going to start to go either faster, get their cadence better, get their running mechanics better, and they might start thinking about that marathon. So what do you do? Help them and meet them where they're at. Most physical therapists pride themselves on getting people out of pain. I think that's complete bullcrap. All you did was get them out of a current current phase of their life and their tissue tolerance. Right behind that, don't celebrate too long (laughs) because as you're celebrating, guess what? They're going to come right back with the next stage of tissue tolerance. If you keep developing and pushing people, it's just the nature of the beast. In pro sports, this is how it happens. You might have a AAA player come into your clinic and they're like, hey, my shoulder hurts after throwing, you know, 90 miles an hour, blah, blah, blah. I can only last four innings and that's when it, it, it doesn't bother me anymore or it bothers me anymore. Okay, great. So you get them stronger, work on the rehab, you know, twisty, bandy exercises, whatever you want to do. And then you get them out of pain. Don't think that they're out of pain forever because they, the moment they continue to apply high amounts of tissue stress, guess what? You have a new job. Now they're going to be able to accept more load. Now they can go six innings. Oh, now they're in double A. Now they can, uh, they can withstand a lot more but you will never get them out of pain as long as they continue to apply tissue stress. It's just the nature of the game. The problem is, is that you can see that in athletes, but you can't see it in your community members. So my point to all of this is that, how do you get more athletes on your schedule? First, you have to understand who they are. They're just a person who has high tissue stress. Secondly, you gotta meet them where they're at. Yes, they're running a 5K. But just remember, they might run a half or a half marathon or a full marathon, whatever it is. They're going to have pain later down the line. You just got to meet them where they're at. If you have somebody with low fitness level and they need to get, you know, they have knee pain or back pain just because they're inactive, meet them where they're at, push them to the next level, get them fit, get them into an exercise routine where they're walking twice a week. Then they're going to develop knee pain. Meet them where they're at. That's just the nature of the beast move them on to, you know, going to the gym two times a week. Now they have shoulder pain. Meet them where they're at. That's just normal. We're adding more tissue stress. And now as they start to lose weight, as they start becoming more active, they're like, I want to do the next thing. I want to run a 5K. Great. You're going to have a challenge after that. Start working on running mechanics, better shoes, foot, you know, mechanics, all those other things. And if the minute you can meet people where they're at, you just keep helping them bridge along that spectrum of fitness and constantly challenge them. This world will always be filled with people with pain. As long as people exercise, there will always be pain in this planet. And if we as a profession continue to advocate that people move more and, you know, do more fitness, we're also advocating that they're going to have pain. I promise you, because it's just tissue stress. People don't know how to progressively overload themselves. They go from couch potato to 5K all within three months because somebody challenged them. That's okay. Don't don't discourage people, but just know you have to support them there. Okay, great. We'll get you out of that pain. Don't celebrate as a physical therapist getting people out of pain because that's just temporary. It's momentary. Celebrate it. Enjoy it for about a day and then support them on the next journey because they're going to have something by, uh, right after that. The minute you can understand this and you can see how you help people across their lifespan because of adapting their neuromuscular uh, demands and tissue tolerance across the journey, wow, you now can help people to uh, an nth degree. It doesn't stop at the shoulder. It doesn't stop at the knee. It doesn't stop at those things. Actually, it never stops. 
it actually never really stops. And so I think for a lot of physical therapists, they're like, well, I want to get an athlete because, you know, I can get them back to sport, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you're going to see, you have to understand athletes are, they're, they're seasonal, right? So they're going to be all year long. They're going to be seasons. There's going to be, you're going to see them across so many uh, different aspects of their career and life. So how do you get more athletes on your schedule? Understand who they are first and foremost. Two, meet them where they're at. And thirdly, don't overload them. Stop doing what social media or other people are doing. It's momentary. The way you get people on athletes is you see them as a spectrum of fitness and activity. Treat your couch potato person as somebody that you can bridge in and increase their activity level. Get your community member to push them to do a little bit more. Get your pro athlete to just nudge, just to decrease their tissue tolerance. And when you're pushing people back and forth all within that spectrum, guess what? You're naturally going to get athletes across your whole schedule all day because you're going to get a fitness person who's going to become more of an athlete. And you're going to get an athlete who trusts you and recommends more people to you. You're going to get community members who become more athlete, more athletic, all because you saw them in this space, in this capacity that they're a body who continues to have tissue adaptation and you want more and more for them. So if you have a weightlifter, if you have a CrossFit, if you have an Olympic lifter, a power lifter, you have to understand they're never going to be pain free. You got to understand that. And so how do you get these people on your schedule? You have to understand their mindset, communicate to them. Don't show them a fancy exercise because that's not what they want. They want sustainability across the year, being able to communicate to people. It all starts by the way that you approach, the way that you view them first and foremost. Once you can do that, that's powerful. You'll get people who refer to you. You get family members like this person is different. That, you know, um, uh, Melissa, at, you know, whatever PT clinic or uh, Mike down the road. He's awesome. He didn't see me as a uh, pro athlete he saw me as a person who needs help getting back to whatever it is or he saw me as not a knee pain but somebody who needed to give who wanted to get back into a 5k just nobody talked to me about it nobody showed me how to do that or it's uh you know mary who had the back pain from sitting all day at work and nobody ever treated her like that they just saw that she had back pain and neck pain and they give her corrective exercises but nobody ever pushed her to become more of an athlete more active and when you can do that, that, that genuine approach to push people's fitness levels back and forth based on what their tissue can demand or tolerate, that's how you naturally get more people on your schedule. So it comes from internally you viewing what you do for people. And notice I didn't say take a course. I didn't say, uh, you know, uh, do this one, uh, read this one book or whatever it is. The funny thing is, is that all you have to do is look at the people you serve they're already in front of you. Stop trying to like get more initials, take all these courses. You have all these people in front of you. You have the capacity to do it. It's just you were, they were looking at you. You just weren't looking at them. And so how do you get more people on your schedule? Make it simple. Understand their mindset. Don't, don't flaunt the, you know, initials. Don't flaunt the sex exercises. Meet them where they're at. Communicate effectively. See where you can push and pull. Every person's going to be different. You're not going to be able to do this with everybody. But there's about 80% of the people who you serve just want to be pushed. They just don't know who to go to. Most people attribute, you know, going to a fitness specialist as the only way to get tissue stress. Think about that. You're the tissue saver. You're like the, the healer of the profession. And the uh, performance or fitness specialist is the one who adds the tissue stress. But physical therapists are in a position where we can kind of do a little bit of both. It's whether you can communicate that instead of calling it like, oh, training or strength training or whatever it is. No, how about we just continue to add more load, add more stress, create a program for you so you can do this on your own and you make them independent. It allows them to have a choice, have an opportunity to do this on their own. And when you do that, you have people who naturally love you and they want to be part of something just a little different. Where I got this concept from was working in pro sports. I, I really understood. Uh, so I, I used to work on, on a campus where I saw people, I mean, not 24 hours a day, but 
you would see people uh, at least probably 14, 12, 14 hours a day. You would see them in the morning at, you know, in the dining hall uh, for breakfast. And then you would uh, be out at practice with them and then you'd have lunch with them. And then you would uh, go to their strength training sessions in the afternoon. And then you would have a dining hall at night and you ran into them all day. And I realized these are just normal people. They just have a high amount of stress all day, every day. They're pro athletes, what they're being paid to do. And my role as a physical therapist was like, oh my gosh, I am not a healer. I just learned I had to be able to adjust and meet them where they were in the day, in the week, in the season, in the year. And once I saw that, I was like, wow, these are all of my community members too. It's no different. They're the same person. It's just a community member maybe spends a lot of portion of their day sitting or standing, whatever it is. And so if they're not applying tissue stress, of course, they're going to develop pain. So then at the end of that, I could, to I could totally get it. All I had to do was apply more stress to them or teach them how to or push them to join a gym or whatever it is. And they were like, how did you know that? I'm like, you're just not getting stress across the, uh, across the day. How about you just need more? No surgery, no pill, no exercise is going to fix your neck pain or your back pain until you apply more stress across a week, across a quarter, across a year. And once they got more fit, they lost weight. And they're like, okay, Chris, what's next? And I was like, what do you want to do? And it just became this cascade. And when I had pro athletes who were like, hey, Chris, I don't want to do the like 10, 10, you know, 10,000 exercises that most PTs give me. I was like, what are you looking for? They're like, I just, I feel exhausted. I feel, you know, whatever it is. And I was like, okay, you know what? Today's going to be a soft tissue day. We'll relax. We'll do some recovery work. But tomorrow you have some postural work, whatever it is. And I saw that they were they were overtraining. So I had to work with their strength coach to back them up, to back them off. I had to work with their technical coach. Hey, can we go lower the intensity? Just give me two weeks because I know their central nervous system is low fried. I just saw that they were they had too much stress going on. I had to be able to adjust that. And that to them was more powerful than the 50 exercises that most PTs would see as the as the main route. Well, why didn't you look at orthotics? Why didn't you look at these things? Who cares? They're overtraining. That's not going to solve the problem. So it becomes how you see what you do for people. It's not the stretch. It's not the balance exercise. It's not the orthotics. It's not the tape job. It's not the McKenzie exercise. It's not the Mulligan technique. It's not the best strengthening exercise. It's what are you doing for this person right here, right now? And if you can adjust those things, guess what? You'll get more active people on your schedule or you'll turn the couch potato into an active person and they want to go into the next level. So how do you get more athletes on your schedule? Change your mindset. Give you an opportunity to uh, really dive deep uh, what you do. Keep applying, you know, everything that you're doing. Uh, help people move better. Uh, help people get stronger. Help people get more flexible. But ultimately, keep pushing them and developing them into uh, what, what it is that they want next. And once you can do that, you're helping people become more athletic, more fit. And don't think that athletes are any different. It's just that is they're already in a, they're already in that stage, and you have to bring them back. So meet people where they're at. Understand the athlete mindset. Don't become that PT that they get annoyed with, uh, and that'll put yourself in a really good position. So wherever you are, uh, whether you're a new grad, established, an expert, blah blah blah, it gives you a spectrum to work across so that you can be successful in your community. Cause that's essentially what you're trying to do. You're like, yeah, but does, how does that work in my rural town? How does that work in New York? How does that work in uh, Florida? Believe me, it's not regional. It's not like your setting is that much different. It's the same people. It's just how you view it. And you can do the same thing, move to Colorado and implement the same process, move to Kansas. It's the same. It's just that you were perceiving yourself as the joint by joint expert versus the uh, the person who can adjust tissue stress based on where they're at, what their wants are, what their needs are, where they are in season, off season, your job is to facilitate that. And so as a sports PT, this is critical to your understanding, whether they're acute injuries, subacute, chronic pain, it's all the same process, tissue healing, and being able to support people across the journey. So uh, wherever you are, I, I hope that helps you. Uh, it's It's been my uh, my current obsession uh, is meeting people where they're at. 
truly, uh, in on all aspects of my life. Uh, and so uh, if you can do that for your patients and your athletes, it'll be a game changer. And um, as you continue to grow, I, and a lot of you have uh, sent me messages for those who listen on this podcast, follow me on Instagram, part of my programs, uh, share your uh, share your your progress with me. Uh, it's the thing I like to thrive on. I, I love to see where people are. So if you've been listening to this podcast or you have some goals, some wins, uh, things that you've been doing, uh, some of these things have been helping you out professionally and personally, um, share them. Send me a, a personal email, drchris at drchrisgarcia.com. Um, I, I personally read every email that comes through there and uh, I, I thrive on those. So uh, if you're progressing because of these, uh, drop me a note, let me know, or send me a DM on Instagram. Either way, uh, I hope you guys are doing well and uh, crushing it in this world. I'll see you all on the next episode. Take care.